Hey everyone. In this video, I want to talk about Azure Lighthouse, this fantastic capability where I as a service provider want to be able to manage resources for my various customers and in a very efficient way, both for the customer and for me as the service provider. As always, a like and subscribe is appreciated. So if I take a step back, if I think about, well, what is life without Azure Lighthouse? So what would we typically have to do if I was a service provider and I want to be able to manage resources for my customer? And I can think about, well, as a service provider, I have my own Azure Active Directory. So this is the service provider side. And I may have subscriptions, but we don't care about those. And as a service provider, I have all the people that are gonna do work for my customers. And then on the customer side, I can think about, well, the customer, well, they have their own resources. So the customer have their own Azure AD, so that's the customer's Azure AD instance. And then the customer have their resources. So the customer has, well, um, they have their subscriptions. Obviously, they'll have multiple of these. Then inside those subscriptions, they'll have the various resource groups. Well, without Lighthouse, what would have to happen is the users from the service provider, each of them, well, they would all have to get added. All of these things would be added as guests. So I'll be using the external identities feature, uh, B2B. So then they get this little external identity object. The authentication is still happening over here, but they're gonna show up as guests. And then likely, hey, I'll create some groups in the customer's Azure AD, and I would have to add them into it. And then that group would be given certain roles. So hey, that group is given roles either at resource group level or subscription level, but it will be using that role-based access control. Now, this is really horrible for everyone. As the customer, well, what about when new people join the service provider? Well, they have to go and do a new guest. Now, I could use features like the governance capabilities. I could use um, service packages so they could go and maybe join in a simpler way, but it's still ugly. And as the service provider, if I'm one of these people, well, if I'm managing 100 different customers, well, I have to constantly be switching tenants. And so that's a really miserable experience for me as well. If I wanted to try and do actions across hundreds of different customers, that's a really painful thing to do. When people leave, or oh, I have to try and terminate those various relationships, it's really not a great experience. So yes, entitlement management may help with bits of that, but it's still not a great thing. So how are we solving this problem? And this is where we think really about Azure Lighthouse. So, if now we add in the whole idea of Azure Lighthouse, and I think they missed something, so I really think kind of you should have the Lighthouse um, as part of that, but Azure Lighthouse, this really changes the entire structure, both for the service provider and for the customer. Now we have really the same components in play here. So once again, as the service provider, I still have my Azure Active Directory. So I can think, yep, I have my Azure, A oh, I have my Azure AD. And once again, I'm gonna have all my various users that are part of my company. And then once again, we have the customer. And once again, the customer has their own Azure AD. And once again, the customer 
has their own sets of resources. So we can say, hey, yet yeah, they have subscriptions and the various resource groups. So all those same things exist. Now in this example scenario, we'll actually say, me as a service provider, just so you can see in the demos, I'm gonna be on board to azure.com. So this is the service provider company. And the customer is gonna be savvletech.net. Just so you can really see the demonstrations flow through. So we have exactly the same components as we had before. But now the process is gonna change. I don't wanna add all these users as guests to the customer's Azure AD. I do not want to do that. Instead, I'm gonna use Azure Lighthouse to essentially create an offer of, hey, I as a company, I'm gonna be able to manage resources for you. So the first step to make this a reality, well, before we had the idea of just the users, I'm actually gonna create a group. Just change my color. So we'll actually light up the pieces that are Lighthouse. So I'm gonna create a group and I'm gonna put the users into that group. Now obviously over time, new users may join. I can add and remove people from the group, but it's the group that I'm gonna give a certain permission to on the customer side. That's really the, the big deal. Now the way we're gonna do this is through an Azure Resource Manager template. Now I'm gonna show you this in a second, but the whole point is I'm gonna create this template. So this template is gonna consist of Basically, it's this JSON file, and it's gonna have an offer. So I'm offering, basically, my services. Now, when I look at this file, there's a various sets of components that actually go into this file. But for the first thing, instead of giving it to individual users, what I want to actually do here is it's going to be a group from my tenant. So I have my service provider tenant. So that's the first part. So it's gonna be kind of this managed tenant ID as a property. So the ID of my Azure ID as a service provider is part of it. And then what I'm gonna have is a principle. So the actual security principle that I'm giving this to, so this is gonna be the ID of the group. And then I'm gonna specify um, particular roles. So there's gonna be a particular role ID. And that's one of the standard roles defined in Azure Resource Manager. And optionally, I could specify a target like a particular subscription or resource group, but more likely the customer's gonna to wanna to pick that at the time of the actual application. Now these, this principle and the role, what I'm really doing with those is that's an authorization. And I can have multiple authorizations within a single file because I may have different groups of people that are gonna perform different functions for my customers. So they might need different roles. I don't wanna give everyone the same highest level of role I need. So hey, I've got some people that just need to interact with a certain type of object. Well, they only get the role the least set of permissions to do that role. I have another set of people in my service provider that need to do other things. So they get certain roles. So in my file, my offer, I will have multiple sets of authorizations for the various roles that different groups of people within my Azure AD tenant actually need. So I'm gonna have different groups of people that need the different roles. And um, today it cannot be a custom role. It cannot be owner. So there's a few things I, I cannot do today. Contributor really is the highest role that I can do. And once I create this file, the whole point now is I can make it available in different ways. I could think, well, hey, we have the Azure Marketplace. So I might publish this into the marketplace. 
really make it available to everyone. Or, and this is more common, I can think about, well, there's some person I've been working with over on that company that I'm gonna provide them service management for. So that particular person I'm working with, hey, I would send them the file. So it's got all those configurations. So before we go any further, let's have a look actually at this process. So what I wanna do super quickly is there's a whole bunch of templates available. So if I go and look at the templates, so what I'm doing right now is these are the sample files for Azure Lighthouse. And what I can see is, well, hey, there's examples here for deploying to a subscription, i.e. I'm importing an entire subscription to be managed by the service provider. Or I just wanna onboard a particular resource group, multiple resource groups. Hey, onboarding and using PIM. PIM is in preview right now, but they would have to elevate up before having those roles. So there are all these different types of templates, huge numbers available. I'm gonna focus on the resource group. Now I could go and look at the template or I could just say deploy to Azure. If I hit deploy to Azure, it's gonna bring up that custom deployment. And notice what it's asking for are a set of parameters. Now, what I've done is to save a little bit of time. And what I would probably deliver to my customer, I would deliver to my customer the template and also I would pre-create the parameter file. So notice in the parameter file, I have things like, well, a unique offer name, an offer description. I have the managed by a tenant ID. So this value, this is the service provider's Azure AD tenant ID. So if I was that service provider, so this is my onboard to azure.com, if I was to look at my Azure Active Directory, notice my onboard to Azure, my tenant ID is C33, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But C33, that's the important part to remember. So that's what I'm putting in as my tenant ID. So here we can see that C33, et cetera, so that's the tenant ID. And then I have a number of authorizations. Now the authorizations, these are the components of what the permissions. So we have a principal ID. So here we can see it's the same principal ID. So this is the principal ID, this is a group. Remember, I don't wanna give it to users, I want it to be a principal ID. So what we've done here is in the service provider tenant, I've created a group and it's my Lighthouse Manage group into which I can add and remove users. But the key point here is notice it has an object ID, F3C. So when I go and look at my authorizations, it is the ID of the group, F3C, F3C. And then I'm specifying a role definition ID. Now these are standard across the regular Azure roles. If I was to just go and look, notice I'm doing two, this B24 and this 91C. If I now just go and look at a regular Azure subscription, so if I look at my subscription, access control roles, well, we have contributor. So if I look at contributor role, and look at the JSON, I can see the role definition. B249. So that B249, well, that's the first role. I'm giving it contributor. And then the second role is this 91C. Well, 91C1, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what I'm gonna do, remember, is I'm granting my group certain permissions on the tenant but I might wanna remove that relationship one day. So the other role I wanna make sure I always give myself is there is this managed services registration assignment delete role. And that gives me the ability to remove myself from essentially the customer. So with that role, if I was to actually scroll down, go over, 
delete all my things. But that role is the other ID. I've made it all scroll over so I can't see it properly. But that's what that role would give me. So the other ID is that manage services assignment remove role. Because I want to be able to actually remove myself from managing that tenant in the future. So I want to make sure I always at minimum give myself the role I need and then make sure, hey, I also give myself this role, the Manage Services Registration Assignment Delete role. So that is the second role in this file. Now in my example, I'm also specifying the resource group that I want, but obviously I don't have to do that. But I would copy paste this, and then as the customer, in my custom deployment, I could edit parameters, notice it's asking me for the values of all of those various things. Region, um, the details. So rather than typing them in, I can just do edit parameters, paste in that value, and then it's filled in all of the various details. So it's put in, hey, the group of authorizations, tenant ID, the offer, etc. I'd review and create, it's doing a check, and then I would just say create. So I would go through. I would hit create. Now I've already run this in my environment. But remember, my target here is this resource group, RGLH Delegate. So I have deployed this template to stand up Azure Lighthouse, which is going to this particular resource group. And if I was to look at my deployments, I can see I ran this in the past. I can see the details of, yes, I did that managed services registration. So what I've done now with that step is whether it was from the marketplace or whether or not I just gave them the file, what we have done is deployed this to the target scope, be it a resource group or it could have been a subscription. The net result is I have assigned using Azure Lighthouse now that particular set of roles. Now, when I did that, there are no AAD changes. There are no guests added. Uh, there were no RBAC changes to the resources themselves. Remember, I gave myself permission to a particular resource group. If I go and look at that resource group as the customer, so let's actually go and look at that. So I can see the deployment happened. If I actually look at the access control and role assignments, it was at the resource group level and I gave it contributor, remember? Well, there are no scopes set at the resource group level, nor can I see that managed services assignment delete it does not show up in the regular role-based access control. There were no guests added. It was completely transparent to me as that customer. But as a customer, I executed it, that I have now given permission through the Azure Lighthouse. Now as the service provider, I now have permission. So if I switch over now to my onboard to Azure identity, so the first thing, remember the pain point in the past was to be able to manage things for my customer, I would have to go and switch directory. I would have to go and switch over to savvletech.net. I am not having to do that. My focus is still on board to Azure. And now what will happen is for the subscriptions, I can now see, well, the directory that I've been delegated to. And now under the delegated, I can see the subscription from that delegated Azure AD. So I have not had to switch. Even though that subscription trusts a different Azure AD, it's now showing up because of Lighthouse under a delegated tenant as a delegated subscription. So I now have access to that subscription even though I have not switched tenants. Now think about that for a second. That now means that through my portal, if I had 100 customers, in that filter, I could select subscriptions across 100 different customers all in one go. So in terms now of my view, when I go and look at my portal now, so let's think about that. I'm this user, for example. Well, which all the users are slightly different color. So imagine I'm this particular person. 
that, remember, was in that group that was given that role. So now me as that particular person, if I'm sitting at my computer, whether I want to use the portal, whether I want to use PowerShell, the CLI, an, uh, an ARM template, a bicep file, it, anything, it doesn't matter. I am not switching tenant. I will now just be able to act on it based on the role that I was given from the lighthouse. So I can now just do things at that scope. So that's the, the super powerful part. So I'm now very happy that I can do things across lots and lots of different tenants with no changes to my environment. I can now mass manage all those different things. So that's a huge change for me. So I now have that access. So let's kind of continue this through. So if we go back again as me on that service provider, so I can now see it. I could select all of the hundreds of different subscriptions that I might have access to. Well, I can now see that resource group. It shows up for me. I see the resource group. If I had PIM, I could use PIM. The PIM would be on my side as the service provider. And I can now manage all of those different aspects to it. Now, notice I only see one resource group. If I go home for a second, and if I look at all of the resource groups, I only see one. That's it. Even though on the tenant side, my customer, my customer has huge numbers of resource groups, so many resource groups, but I weren't delegated access to those. So I can't see them. I can only see the resource that I was actually delegated to. Go away, go away. <laughs> so at this point, I have whatever permission that I had. So I could absolutely think about, well, I could go and create a resource in that resource group. So I could hey, do create. And the key point here is I can do anything that you would normally be able to do as long as it's a control plane operation. So when I think about, hey, I can do all of these things, I just need to make sure it is from an ARM perspective, control plane create resources using ARM, all those very delete, modify, whatever permission I have, I can do. But it has to be control plane, not data plane. I cannot do data plane operations today. But anything that is ARM control plane is just gonna work for me. So, hey, let's go and create something. If I was to do something super simple, let's say a storage account, too many offers in the marketplace. Hey, let's create a storage account. Remember, I'm still looking at my tenant, but notice the subscription is showing me that delegated subscription under the delegated Azure AD. I can only see the resource groups I've got permissions for, and I could say, hey, onboard storage 007. I could pick the region. I'm doing all the regular things. There's no difference to my experience here as that service provider. Hit create, validation, go and create. So it's doing the deployment from my Azure AD tenant and through the magic of Lighthouse, <laughs> it's not magic, it's the Azure Resource Manager, it's letting me go and manipulate resources in my customer that was given those roles. Remember, to the group, my account was never given those permissions. I could add and remove people from that group on the service provider side, and they would now just instantly get those permissions. So that succeeded. I can see the resource, it's right there. If I go back and look at the resource group in my customer, and these things might take a little while to catch up sometimes, but within, there you go, it showed up. On the customer side, so let's think about this for a second. I don't see the user in role-based access control. I do not see the user in my Azure AD. I can see the resource group, okay. I can see the resource. Now, if I go and look at the activity log though, although the user from the service provider is not in my Azure AD, well, let's see the activity log. 
Who is the event initiated by? It's the user from the other tenant. So as the customer, my audit logs are still good. It's still showing me the detail of exactly what happened and exactly who did it. So even though it's only the group that was given the permission, I still get the full auditing as the customer to regard to the individual identity that actually performed the action. So I still get that. So even though it's not in the RBAC, even though it's not in the Azure AD, I still get that detail. And now think as the service provider, I could write scripts or automations to now perform things across hundreds of different customers. Because of this, I don't have to switch tenants or mess around with that. And it's, I can add and remove different identities through my choosing. If people come and go within my company, if I decide to use a service principle and application, my customer doesn't have to make any changes because it's just the group. Now, if I wanted to add additional groups in the future, I'm gonna to have to create an updated offer and resend it after another deployment. If it was the marketplace actually, then I can update it. So that is a possibility through the marketplace. That would be the one benefit of the marketplace there. So you really do wanna try and think this through in advance. What are the different types of activity I wanna perform? What are the different sets of permissions for different groups of people? Create the groups, create the different authorizations in advance, and then hey, make that available to my customer and they can use it. So once again, I do as the customer from an activity log, I do get the actual person. So I actually would see, hey, this person who's very happy, um, they performed, I still get all the details. Even though they're not in my Azure AD, it doesn't stop me being able to get that auditing to see exactly who specifically did what? And that's important. I wouldn't wanna see some generic, hey, group did something. That's very bad from a tracking perspective if that's all the log had. It could be hundreds of different people here. So I still can name the individual people. So how do I kind of manage this Lighthouse? So I don't see Lighthouse really as a resource in any of this. So there's two sides to how I can think about seeing the Lighthouse. As the customer, what I can do is, well, they're a service provider to me. So I can go to service providers and I can see the delegations. So I can see I've delegated to this particular resource group, RG Lighthouse Delegate, this, this particular name, and I can see the role assignments. Now you might remember in our file, we had this principal ID display name, Lighthouse Contributor. And you might have wondered, what is that for? Well, this is what it's for. This is what shows up as a display name. So I wanna use again, descriptive group names and what permissions maybe I'm giving them as part of those offers. So as the customer, I'm in the customer subscription right now, as a customer person, john at savilletech.net, I can see, okay, I've got these delegations and I've given these roles, so contributor and that managed services, registration, uh, assignment, delete, it's got a great big role. That would allow the managing tenant to delete this relationship if they wanted to. So as the customer, I can see the details. I can see the audit logging. As the service provider over here, well, I can go to Lighthouse and I can say manage my customers. And at this point, I could see my customers, so there's Savile Tech, and I could see the delegations I have for Savile Tech. I can see the role assignments exactly the same way that the customer could see. So I get the same, I can see the principal ID, the group, the roles I have on them. And this is where if I wanted to, because I have that role, I can manage this. I could, for example, go and, hey, if I don't want these anymore, I could go and remove uh, particular customers from this. There's things around the activity log, if I had that permission. Um, this account doesn't have that. 
So I have all of these capabilities. And if you really boil this down, if you think about what all of this really is, I mean, it's role-based access control. It's just, I'm not seeing it in the portal, but what I'm doing, I'm giving groups from the service provider roles on scopes in the customer. That, that's it, it's, it's really all this boils down to. Groups given roles at customer scope. But what it's doing for me is as the customer, I'm not worried about individual users, it's not clogging up my Azure AD. As a service provider, I manage the life cycle of who should have the various permissions, and I don't have to switch tenants to operate at the Azure Resource Manager control plane. So it's a phenomenal experience for me managing those multiple, multiple customers. So I think about, well, this is Azure Lighthouse. So what does this cost? Nothing, it's free. There is no cost at all to use Azure Lighthouse. If I think about using this, I get this single pane of glass. I get a single sign on, I don't have to change my context. From a best practices perspective, always use groups for the authorization. Do not put users in there because if someone leaves, someone joins, that's, that's horrible. Use groups, plan this out in advance so I don't have to go and update the offer in the future. Really think about what do I wanna be able to offer my customer? Okay, well these are the different roles I would need. These are the different groups of people that would need the different roles so I can make this a nice complete offer. I don't wanna to have to keep going back to them saying, oh sorry, can you redo this deployment please? So use groups, plan it through. Make sure you get that managed service provider uh, assigned delete role. Otherwise, if you terminate that relationship, I can't delete it. I'd have to go and ask the customer very nicely, please, please go and delete. So make sure you include that role in it. In terms of some restrictions today, and this could change in the future. So remember, it's no custom roles. You cannot create a custom role with particular sets of permissions. It's only the ones that are in box. I cannot be an owner. So there's no owner role. Really contributor is the highest role I can do. There is no data plane. So many resources today in Azure now have data plane role-based access control. I cannot do those. Lighthouse operates at the control plane. Uh, I cannot cross environment. So if I think about what does that mean? Remember there are multiple Azure environments. There's Azure commercial, there's Gov, China, Germany, et cetera. I cannot cross those. I cannot have um, this Azure AD tenant in commercial and try and manage my customer's Gov tenant. So that, that would not work today. But that's really it. I mean, hopefully I kind of showed really how simple it was. It's literally create the template, use the ones out the samples. I just have to customize the parameter file for my tenant, my offer name and description, and then which authorizations I want the security principles, which will be groups, and then the particular role IDs, which are standard for those. When I give it to the customer, they would probably update the target with the particular resource group or subscriptions they want to give this set of permissions to, or maybe I'd work with them. They deploy it. Hey, now it just shows up for me through all of the regular Azure Resource Manager control plane interactions. Portal, I don't have to switch tenant. Uh, template deployments, ARM, JSON, BICEP, could be third parties, it, it doesn't matter, PowerShell, CLI, but I can now operate across all of those without changing anything. As the customer, hey, I still get the full information in the activity log of the individual that actually performed the various actions, but I'm not clogging up my Azure AD with a bunch of guest users. I'm not having to add and remove guest users. It just doesn't show on there but I get all of these capabilities. And that's it. So as always, a lot of work goes into creating these, so like, please like. But outside of that, I hope this is useful. This is easy to go and play around with. You can create as many Azure AD tenants as you want. So even if you only have one test subscription, kind of what I was doing, I can create a second Azure AD tenant and modify that parameter file and, and try this stuff out. It's very easy to do. So go give it a go. And uh, until next video, take care.